Okay. Let's okay, let's go with paper two twenty twenty one. This is uh I think when I skim through the paper it wasn't that bad. So we go to module one, aka section one. Information management. Describe two named database organization methods other than the relational and hierarchical model. Right, you have relational, you have hierarchical, you have object oriented, and then you have um relational, hierarchical, object oriented, and what's the other one, mate? Right? It's object oriented and network is the name of my next one. Network. Good, I knew that, right? Object oriented is um I said to describe how do you describe object oriented? You describe it as um classes and objects that relate to each other programmatically and records all right, it's three marks, so to get those three marks, you probably have to say something kind of cool. It would help if you're able to, I don't know, say things like it's used a lot for um, unstructured data. So you could, for example, use for that can relate in many ways. with parents having more than one child yeah where do you use this um maybe there's an example i could give you mm, mm, um good for structured data. data yeah that's the best i could give you there um i think that should be good enough to get e6 marks um, you never know exactly what they want with, with these because we don't really have like a textbook that tells you how deep because object oriented could go really deep, network could go really deep. So you had to kind of figure out, okay, how deep do you really go when you're answering those questions and how deep do you really go when you're teaching? So I have problems with that from a long time. So if the answer is not perfect, you can leave a comment and let me know what will be the perfect answer. Um, that might help some other people. Outline two differences between the hierarchical model and relational model in database organization. Alright, good. So difference number one is um hierarchical is a fixed layout that works from the top down. It doesn't. You see the same thing in a different sentence. Respond well. Um, whereas relational has some flexibility in how the tables relate. Um. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, right, and next difference between hierarchical and relational would be um, the whoa. This one, this is this is a tough question. I'm gonna right here. This test, this question has some some depth to it. That okay. fixed layout, top down doesn't respond well to major changes. Um, okay, I'll put on um, hierarchical cannot easily add fields rigidity while um, relational can add new fields even make them Alright, so it's four marks. I probably overwrote, but honestly, I'm not 100% sure of like how to clearly articulate the differences there. 
So usually the key, the key is hierarchical, it's very rigid, it's very structured, you can't really make too much changes to it. Relational is not very rigid and structured, you can make changes, you can create cross relationships, you can rate multiple tables to each other. So you want to get something along those lines to explain. And they, I've gathered they wanted to just show your understanding because the understanding of it is what really matters the most. I'd explain two ways in which data mining could help school, our school benefit um, from its students' databases. Two ways, two ways. Um, they can extract extract data about the school population. That will help them make decisions about which extracurricular activity yes. Example twenty five plus people like football. Next one would be they can extract information that would show trends in the performance of certain classes. and produce a graph to show it mm, yeah mm. all right outline to as much data warehouses are using organizations wow they really were to write plenty in this paper but she's look at lines huh all right it's no secret that I hate to write long, long answers, but IT really does the most to help you write long answers. So let's go, let's see, I'll learn to wisdom with data. Okay, so a data warehouse. Can collect a large set of data. and find bigger trends that can be found in a data mart example how branches of the organization are doing in selling their new products all right that's one thing for a data warehouse let's see if we can get another one for a data warehouse a data warehouse is usually where you take all the information from the data marts and kind of put them in. You corroborate it inside the one place. Um, they can extract information on certain parts of the system. that won't that would not be immediately apparent when looking at the raw data example the sales forecasts for 
the past 10 years can be compared easier yeah for four marks i see that i see that being okay there four marks all right a company that sells products using a physical store offline has decided to offer its products for sale in a website there's three issues related to data handling data handling da, 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 da. That the company should consider when using this new method of selling. Three issues related to data handling. All right, so data handling. When you're handling the data, you're collecting it in a website. So it's a website that have to fill in the information. Hmm. Three issues. List three issues. So you're supposed to just list it. Do we have to write a sentence for it? I don't know, but they give us a lot of lines just for these listing hmm. all right so let's go security the data should be stored in a secure location on the server um accessibility The data should be accessible. Uh, stop it. Yeah, data should be accessible to both the user and the um, company website admin. And it should be, what else? Handling it, it should be secure, it should be accessible, and it should be correct integrity. The data should be correct and an accurate reflection of the original data that was input yeah i guess i'll take that uh... <laughs> Outline two ways in which the company's data processing might be impacted by this new method of selling. Okay, two ways why the which the company's data processing. Alright, so remember they used to do it manually, right? Yeah, they, they have a physical store offline, right? And now they're doing it online. Their data processing, how will it be impacted for four marks? What we want to see is it will be faster. Two ways in which the company's data processing might be impacted by this new method of selling. It didn't say a bad impact or a good impact, so I could say a good one. Okay, let's say um, it'll be faster. It'll be speed. The data would be um, processed faster giving them a quicker turnover and helping them increase sales efficiency and um two is when she are storage storage is like a thing storage the records 
of the transactions would be kept in a more accessible state. Since they can get to it virtually. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So Google speed storage. When you talk about data processing, you could even go and talk about input and any output. Information processing is input process output storage. So if you if you could explain that in light of the company, you should be good. So I went for the speed, which is more processing, and then I went for the storage, but you could go input output. Yeah. Yes, this question was not nice. Look at the amount of writing we had to do there already. That's our whole how long are we recording for now? A whole 19 minutes thereabout. And I just finished question one. Wow, oh boy. Keep you, you did the most for this for, for this paper. All right, state three ways in which the untimely submission of sales data from a company's sales representatives can affect the company's revenues. Outline three ways in which untimely submission of sales data from a company's. All right, so sales data, untimely submission of sales data from a company's representatives can affect revenue. So how does sales data, which is untimely, affect your revenues? If you don't get the sales data on time, mm, mm, mm. Alright, if you don't get the sales data on time, what we're trying to say is it could be wrong, right? So it'd be incorrect. No, incorrect what by? Incorrect projections? No, incorrect. Projections? Projections is the word by? No, profits. All right, so it can affect the profits. The company would make decisions on what to spend money on based on the sales. However, the sales figures may mislead them and they spend more, more than they have. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I will see that. Okay. So that's profits. Which is two marks for each. Oh, I went too hard on that first one. Or maybe not. Okay. Three ways in which you can turn of sales data for the All right, stock. I find this sound like I like, you know, there's that MOB kind of question paper. It's like, you need to know a lot about how a company works, but okay, let's go. Well, yeah, as you'll realize, this IT in Unit 2 is a lot about business and how businesses work and how businesses use IT and how it's applied to businesses. So, yeah, get your business, get your business knowledge up. It will save any long run. Alright, so stock. The company may invest in more stock. To replenish what was sold 
but they may end up being overstock. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, so profits will get affected, stock will get affected. You see, we have to say something about revenue. Something about revenue. So they will lose money. They will. They wouldn't make as much profit. They will have too much stock, which will cause them to lose revenue because they spend money on the stock. And they will also. They might pay the sales representative a higher commission. Again, you need to know about business commissions. The sales representatives. may be paid too much commission resulting in them being overpaid and the company loses money I guess so. I guess so. That's another weird question. This module is turning out to be quite weird. Let's see what the normalization throws at us. Databases, study the student data table below and answer the questions that follow. Mm -hmm. Student number, student name, student address, student age, subject one, subject two, subject three. Okay, cool. Apply normalization rules to the table above and reflect the first normal form and second normal form. Two whole white pages they gave us for that. I hope they, they don't want me to draw over the whole table. How much marks is this? 13 marks. Yeah, but how they want you to reflect it? Do they want you to write over the whole table? If they want me to write over the whole table, that would be very disgusting. I'm not going through that. Um. Now wait. I'm gonna write this out in standard notation because standard notation is a little easier. So let's go with first normal form. If I want to get this into first normal form, I have to clear up these problems here. See this problem here, this blank space? Can I have that? That would be a problem. So what we will do is to get rid of the first normal form problem is we gotta break this up into two tables. We gotta have student number. We need to have a student table. Student. And then from the student table, we're going to have student number. That'll be our primary key. Student name. And student address. Once we do that, now we can have subject table, which will be the subject name. Yeah, that's all. Oh no, I forget to proceed on age. Right, so we had the subject name inside the second table. Right, so that's first normal form. We really don't have any issues there. Everybody is atomic, meaning that all the data is individual. I highly, I really hope that they don't want us to draw the table. Apply normalization rules to the table above to reflect the first normal form and second normal form. Do I have to draw the table by 
first normal form and second normal form. Do I have to put it in first normal form, then second normal form, or do I just have to put it in second normal form and assume that it's in first normal form? No, they specifically said first normal form, then second normal form. So let me go to the 2NF now. Second normal form now would cause me to have to... Mm. I'll have to create serial number. Then I'll have to create serial name. Then serial address. Then serial age. And now I have to relate what subjects are doing. But if you're doing three subjects, that's kind of tough because I can't just put a, a, that's can't just put a foreign key there to be like subject ID. So I'll put enrollment, enrollment ID. And now I have to create a, I'll create a second table. Hmm. It's getting complicated, but when you have 13 marks, so it could be. So I have the student table and I have an enrollment table. From this enrollment table, I'm going to create an enrollment ID, ID, and then a um, a subject ID. Mm -mm. If your enrollment ID is one, and then you have one here, then you have subject. Then that subject will relate to our subject. No. Enrollment ID. When you enroll in a subject, you're going to have multiple subjects out there. This question hard. I'll be back. I'm not too sure exactly what you want. All right. Yeah. So I remember now. Yeah, you had a candidate key for this. Meaning you have to put two fields together to create the thing. So in the um we do have to create an enrollment ID. Well yeah, we are create an enrollment ID. N ID. Right, so that enrollment ID is going to be linked with our ID and our subject. So your ID and your subject will be the two primary keys here because they both are, um, are a key. So the enrollment ID and subject, they will be linked to the ID. So the ID will link here and then it will tell you what subject they're doing. And then you have the subject. Which will just have the sub name. So essentially, what's going to happen is you're going to have a table like... I feel I'm going to draw the table just to give them some, some hope. Hmm. That's a lot of drawing. I really don't want to write back over all of this information, you know. But if I must... So there's student number... Student name and student address and student age and appoint an enrollment ID. Alright. I'm not gonna write out all the names. Let's go and put some random data inside. Alright, so this is one table. This one table here is going to also be related to our enrollment ID table. So I'm going to call this ID and sub. And then there's another table underneath here called subjects. Sub name. Right, so there's only one thing in it. Right, so let's say we have two people. Hmm. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, zero. That person is Jenny Jonas. All 
Ah, I now see what they wanted us to do for the first normal form. The first normal form we had um, well, separate these things here. All right, so let's go back to the student table here. So the student name and student number would be okay. That's good. And I'll pull this across because first normal form requires me to put in student number, first name, surname, and then I have city. No, town and city. Town, then city. Right, okay, now I have made the data atomic. Atomic means that each one of these has its own place. All right, I can see where the 13 marks coming in now. Yeah. This is taking really long. Yeah. All right, I can see where the 13 marks coming in. All right, good. So now we have that. All right. So now for second normal form, I basically have to put back that same thing. Which means I'm going to have to shortcut this and take you out. Delete and copy this exact same thing from here shucks yeah duplicate take that drop it right there We're good i just miss any age part right See that age and take out that and then in bracket. <laughs> but I'm not gonna update this, this next table here. But anyhow, what, what gonna happen is that the student name, which is like Bob, blah 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 blah. You'll have any wrong ID of like one, any wrong ID of one will tell you what subject day that is, which will be like um maths. And then they will have an enrollment ID of one again, but it could be IT. And now this is going to relate to the subject there, actually, maths and IT. So the subject subject name here will be a one to many relationship to that. And the employee ID here will be a one to many here also. So when you want somebody's enrollment ID, you will be able to see all the enrollment IDs and all the stuff that they have here. Wow! I hope I didn't overthink that. I do have the answer sheets to this to know. But um, I'm glad for the first part I realized that first normal form would allow us to make sure all the data is atomic. So we have to make sure all these empty spaces are not there. Which will mean splitting it into two tables and making sure that the data is atomic, which will be first name and surname. And address will be like that. The second normal form part, I gather that this is what they're looking for. Maybe I overthink it, overthunk it, and I went to um, third normal form. But yeah, that should work. For 13 marks, that was enough work for 13 marks. Write a query using SQL to return the student number of all students older than 16 years old. Jeez, I had to go real far for that. Okay. I'll just write it right here and then copy it down. Select Select student student name Is it? What do I want me to get? Student number of all the students, so not student name, student number. Student number and student age from the student table where student age is greater than 16 semicolon. I see no issues there. Right, select student number, student age from students where student age is greater than 16. That's the best you're going to get. The student number of all students older than 16 years. Here is all. Why do you give me six marks for this? 
hold on, hold on, hold on. Select from where, right? So like you see the number, so like you see the age from the student saver. Where I see marks. Thanks for the six marks, I guess. Yeah, I didn't like this module one at all. I didn't like it. It wasn't, it was not fun to do. It was not fun to do. All right, look out for the video for module two.